So good evening. Welcome back to Edu Skills OED Made Easy. Our mission is to make you fall in love with OED. If you're watching this on YouTube, kindly consider subscribing to the channel. Give us a thumbs up if you like our work. And please share the video to your contacts so that we reach out to maximum number of OET aspirants, especially those who are financially struggling to crack OET. And today we are going to deal with uh, writing body paragraph, which is a continuation of previous session. If you have not attended the previous session, don't worry. You can and watch the video. This is George Gale's okay. case notes. So George Gale's uh, the sample file in uh, of OET official uh, site. Thank you, OET, for allowing me to use this for teaching purpose. And we'll be taking the body paragraph today. Already we have taken the introduction. Let me share my screen. So keep smiling. It's a very interesting job. Uh, maybe letter writing is the easiest subtest that you can easily take mark because reading, listening, and all takes a lot of practice. But then letter is very simple. One or two paragraphs, then the introduction, and the request paragraph finished. So 82.0 occupational English test, subtest writing, and writing key skills. OET letter format, you already know it, date, address, where, where line, uh, then you know the purpose, purpose expanded, other paragraph, other paragraph, request, sign off. Today, and this is 180 to 200 words, body paragraph, you know it starts from purpose to request, the word count, and today's session deals with step five, that is purpose expanded. We have already taken a session about the purpose of this particular case note on George Gale. So today we'll be taking up body paragraph. That is a second paragraph. If you consider introductory paragraph as the first one, this is a second paragraph or the first body paragraph. You know, this is the most important information. Soon after the purpose paragraph, introductory paragraph. So this is this is the purpose expanded. And that is the most, informa most important information that we are giving to the person reading the letter. So step one, take the case notes. Today, I'm going to teach you a special method. I have taught you several methods to identify the relevant case notes, asking a couple of questions, then uh, looking into the keywords and identifying the keywords and segregating them and putting them together to identify the key issues and relevant notes. Today, I'll be giving you a new method whereby you can identify the case notes. You know, this is the case note, George Gale. I have taken up a particular portion, the first portion, and we'll take, this is what required for first paragraph. Step two, framing questions. Already we have taken sessions on this, Jake Thompson and all those case notes. So we have, we'll be framing a couple of questions only for first body paragraph. So situation, purpose, para expanded, or the, second body paragraph after the purpose paragraph. So this gives the situation. This explains the situation. You have to tell them who was admitted. Means the name, here it is George again. So since you have already mentioned it in the rail line or the full name is mentioned in the purpose paragraph, you need not write the full name. You can just write Mr. Gale, the second name. Then how old is he? If you have written in the previous purpose paragraph, you need not repeat here, but then usually I have suggested not to go with the dates and other details in the purpose paragraph. We can have a one beautiful sentence with those four aspects. I have given you four questions. Uh, and I said uh, the deluxe bus, I have a bus for purpose paragraph, and th that is crystal clear. So I'm giving you a couple of questions exactly as I gave you for the introductory paragraph. You have to answer these questions. You have to just locate the answer, answer for these questions, and those things will be relevant. Now, next one, what is his living status? So you have to look into these questions and go into the case notes and highlight those case notes. Those are the relevant case notes, and those are the only relevant case notes. And fourth one, where was he admitted? Fifth one, when was he admitted? And sixth one, what were the symptoms? Okay, with what symptoms he came to the hospital or got admitted? Why was he admitted? What was the context? In what context he got admitted? And was there any earlier episodes or medical history? It's not typically medical history that you have in the case notes, but as regards this particular condition, was there some issue earlier? Then what was the finding? You mean the diagnosis? What was the finding through the investigations? So step three. Step three, finding answer to these questions. Those are the relevant case notes. Just go to the case notes and find answer to these questions. And you know, this is a case note. 
and you have the situation purpose para expanded or the situation of the patient who was admitted, how old is he, where was he admitted, when was he admitted, what were the symptoms, why was he admitted, the context, was there any earlier episodes, medical history, what was the finding, what was the finding means, the what did you, what did you find out uh, through the various investigations. Now you have to, maybe in the case note, you can write down these questions and whenever you take up some case notes for the first body paragraph and write down these case notes in the space somewhere over there or keep in your notebook and try to identify the answers for these questions. So here, who was admitted? George Gale. And how old was he? 85 years old. Where was he admitted? You know, Old Town Hospital. And when was he admitted? And you have here 10th May. 2021 hospital admission. What were the symptoms? Fall down. Was fever. Fall down. Yeah, fever and disorientation. Okay, we'll come back to the answers. Just and why was he admitted? The context, the fall and other things you have to oh. mention. Fall and after fall. Yeah, was there any earlier episodes? Prior episode to two prior weeks to, yeah, prior, two weeks, weeks prior. prior. Yeah. Yeah, that was the thing. What was the finding? Finding was UTI. Yeah, UTI, exactly. Diagnosis, UTI. it's clearly given there, diagnosis. diagnosis. Now, maybe you can say uh, first name, who was admitted, Mr. Gale. Then the age, then how old is she? 85 years old. Then status, what is his living status? Widower lives alone in his own flat. How beautiful, you see. That is introducing and identifying the patient. Okay? In the first body paragraph, you have... Introduce the patient with his name and age. If the age is not mentioned in the purpose paragraph, otherwise need not mention again. And name, definitely the second name, Mr. Gale. You have to start it with the paragraph always with the name. And his living status. Then situation. Where was he admitted? Mr. Gale was admitted to Old Town Hospital. Date of admission. When was he admitted? On 10th May 2021. See that he fell on 9th. Sometimes you make a mistake, you write 9th May 2021, you'll be penalized. So beware of the dates. Okay, it was he fell on 9th, but he ad got admitted on 10th. Symptoms, what were the symptoms? Fever and disorientation. And why was he admitted? There is a background again, you know. Okay, see here, first one introducing the patient, then situation, you admission, date of admission, symptoms, all those things you have seen, then background. Okay, why was he admitted? What was the context? He had a fall at home and hit his head. Hours later, cry for help. Neighbors heard the cry, called the ambulance. That was the context. See, that is clearly given over there. And was there any earlier episodes, medical history, a single episode of vomiting, palpitations, and dysuria two weeks prior to this incident? That's also clearly given there, directly given. So this is how you develop the paragraph. Now locating relevant case notes. You know, these things are found name and age is found in under patient details. And status is found under social background. Then you have the situation, uh, admission in the hotel hospital, admission details, where you have objective and subjective subheadings. You can find the symptoms in the objective subheadings. Symptoms means it's not what subjective means, what the patient explains. Those need not be clear uh, reality. They might explain, but you will understand it in a different way. The medical professional or the doctor will understand objectively the things. So objective means what is the real symptoms. Subjective means they can uh, mention so many things. In between, they can say that this pain, that pain, which may not be connected with the main condition. So objective is the real thing from the point of view of a medical professional. Then back on 9th May, he had a fall at home and he hit his head. Hours later, cry for help, all those things. There is a background. Hospital admission, subjective. This background is given under the subjective subheading, means what the patient explains. So there is the background. That fall and hitting his head and he's crying, then neighbors hearing the cry, then calling the ambulance and a single episode of meeting and all those things prior, two weeks prior. Then you have diagnosis. That's under the titles diagnosis, urinary tract infection, UTI. It's very simple. Step four, framing simple sentences. Already you know that. These days we are dealing with it. So I may not be dealing in detail about it. Simple, uh, framing simple sentences. Who was admitted? Mr. Gale was admitted. Simple sentences for each of the question. Just one simple sentence for each question. Where was he admitted? Mr. Gale was admitted on Old Town Hospital. When was he admitted? He was admitted on 10th May 2021. 
And why was he admitted? He had a fall at home with a head strike. Two weeks earlier, he had an episode of vomiting pul palpitations and dysuria. And what was the finding? Diagnosis revealed a UTI. And what was the treatment given? He was treated with IV amoxicillin, right? So you have these simple sentences, purpose paragraph expanded or the second body paragraph. You have all these questions to be answered. And that is the paragraph. Step seven, framing compound sentences. I have already explained all these details. That's why I'm not going in detail with every sentence, but I will show you one or a couple of them. For example, Mr. Gale was admitted was the simple sentence. Okay. okay. And Mr. Gale was admitted to o Old Town Hospital. So what you have to do? You have to just, what is striked out is not required. So you have a sentence here. Mr. Gale was admitted to Old Town Hospital. Uh, one simple sentence with these two aspects. Okay. Again, it's a simple sentence. Then you can add this one more thing. He was admitted on 10th May, 2021. So even these two simple sentences can be constructed again into a simple sentence. Mr. Gale was admitted to Old Town Hospital. Uh, admitted to, you can say brought to or any other uh, synonymous expressions. You can, he was brought to the hospital. He was admitted to the hospital. Mr. Gale was admitted to Old Town Hospital on 10th May, 2021. Compound sentence. See these three sen small sentences. Mr. Gale is 85 years old. Mr. Gale is a widower. Mr. Gale lives alone in his own flat. So Mr. Gale, here what happens? You are again having the simple sentence, combining these sentences into a, a longer simple sentence. Mr. Gale, comma, an 85-year-old widower, comma. This, this is known as the subject complement. So whenever you write some subject complements, after the name, put a comma, and after the subject complement, put another comma, lives alone in his own flat. So these three simple sentences are put into it. Again, a simple sentence with subject complements. Now the cohesiveness. Cohesiveness means sequence of events. See, he had a fall, then he cries out, and neighbors hear that cry, then ambulance, they order the ambulance, he gets admitted, symptoms, diagnosis. Then in the next paragraph, again, we'll deal with treatment. Hope you are following me. See, this is how we can write the paragraph. Mr. Gale, an 85-year-old widower, lives alone in his own flat. Already we have this sentence, uh, three sentences complained, into this one sentence. On 9th May, again, we have a sentence over there. He had a fall at home, and it is at this also we have framed the sentence. You have to just put into this order in the sequence into the paragraph. It was not uh, till several hours later that his neighbors heard his cry for help and called the ambulance. Mr. Gale later said that he had suddenly felt very weak before he collapsed. He reported a single episode of vomiting, palpitations and dysuria two weeks prior to this incident. Mr. Gale was admitted to Old Town Hospital with a fever and disorientation. Symptoms later attributed to a febrile urinary tract infection. This is the sample that, that can be written in different ways. For example, Mr. Gale was brought to Old Town Hospital with a fever and disorientation on 10th May 2021. So different framing, same content, but a different way of framing sentences. He reported a fall at home with a head strike. His neighbors heard a cry after a few hours of the fall. Therefore, they called an ambulance. Two weeks earlier, he had an episode of vomiting, palpitation, and dysphoria. Further investigations revealed a urinary tract infection and he was treated with IV amoxicillin. You can even, treatment can be added here if you need. After the diagnosis, you can add treatment as well. Depends on your paragraph construction. I'm just giving you an idea how to frame the, uh, a beginner, if you are a beginner, if you are an expert, you need, I need not tell you those details. So try to go through these steps. No, simple steps, but they are very, very important for the beginner specifically. And you can apply the same questions to different different topics, different case notes. That is for the particular purpose paragraph or the second paragraph, purpose expanded, second body paragraph. You need patience. And if you have patience with a couple of write, uh, letter writing practices, you will definitely receive, reach competency. Otherwise, you keep on writing up letters that may not help you much. Why I am taking segment Hello. by segment so that you take one or two case notes and work out in the same way the purpose expanded. And also, if you have not attended, if you are a beginner, please go back to the uh, YouTube channel, Edge Skills Soviet YouTube channel. I, I had taken a session on purpose. I explained it. And this is that purpose paragraph being expanded. Without knowing what was the purpose paragraph, you will not be able to expand the purpose paragraph. God bless you all. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father.